Welcome to the double your income in 30 days challenge. Now, this is an exciting challenge to be doing. Now, why am I doing this challenge? It's first off, I want to give the opportunity to my wife to quit her job if she wants to, because she has a very demanding job. I could never do what she does and that's helping youth kids that's been struggling all their life, maybe being neglected by their parents, doing drugs and stuff like that, helping them get on into their working life, being a student, just working and being a person. And it's a very demanding job. And I want to just at least give her the opportunity to either come work with me in my company if she wants or quit and take a less paying job and not have to take a job because we need the money financially. So that's the main reason, but also I have been doing some like, I'm not been playing to win, I've been playing not to lose. And also I was listening to Eric Thomas, the, the hip hop preacher, he was challenging all his viewers to a 120% challenge. That meaning that you give 120% effort into actually achieving something great. And he challenged for 21 days because of the nature of signing clients. We're going to do it for 30 days. Now my income right now after the Corona situation is around 10 K. So we're going to do it's more or to be precise. It's 9,700 with today's exchange rate, but we're going to say 10 K because I can pay myself 10 K and then we're going to do it to where I can pay myself 20 K a month. And we're going to do that in 30 days. Now, how I'm going to do that is that I have my own digital agency. And if you want to watch a little bit about that, you can watch like a video about that. I should have a link here or down in the description. And we're going to cover some basics now today, what I'm going to be doing in the next few days. And first off, I wanted to show you uh, how we're going to do it. What type of uh, emails are we going to be sending out? Am I going to be using Facebook or LinkedIn? Stuff like that. So just follow along and it's going to be a really great challenge to be doing. Now here we are looking at Gary, 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 which is basically just an advanced Excel sheet, but it's quite nice at just visualizing a funnel or in this example, like I've just jotted down some processes here about how many uh, I have the possibility of um, emailing, how many I need them or how many clients do I need to achieve the goal of doubling my income? What's the highest probability or what's the highest outcome of this challenge? And that is, uh, I've defined that I have 46 cities because I don't do uh, more than one company in one niche in one city. So meaning that in my city here locally, I only have one dentist company that I work with because if I take on two in the same city, I'm competing with myself and I feel that's unmoral, unethical, whatever you, word you want to use, I don't do that. So we have 262 businesses. It's an, an average of, or there's three different niches. It's dentists, which I have a lot of already, uh, or the most of already. And there's electricians, that's the second niche I'll be going after. And the third niche is a brand new niche for me, and that's lawyers. So that's going to be an interesting one because I see a lot of opportunity, but also I don't know really uh, how well this is going to go. So we just have to try. And first off, I want to try with email. So here you can see in Geru, I've taken three different scenarios. One is that if I sell one company in every city that I want to, which is highly unlikely, but that means that I'm going to be having 46 new clients. And if I average around, because the size of the cities, they vary. So the prices is also going to vary. And that means that I'm going to have a revenue increase of 450,000 Norwegian kroners. And that is with today's exchange rate, $48,531. So around 50,000 US dollars a month is the potential of email outreaching to all these businesses. So also let's be more realistic and that is that we are not going to sell every city. But let's say we sell half, that's 200,000 Norwegian kroners or around 25,000 
uh, a month, a US dollars a month increase. So if we, in this scenario here, I'm gonna be a little bit more um, data driven and also based on the goal itself is to double my income. So what do I have to do to go double my income? Well, here we are watching that 262 people are gonna get an email from me. If we say that 10% open the emails, which is quite low for what I've been experiencing, but let's, I don't like to use too high values so you get disappointed. I have set a webinar replay here, but we are gonna do a strategy video with the client, and that's that I've uh, analyzed their entire web presence and their opportunities, and then I send that in an video format for them to watch because I really want not to sell them. I want to find out, are they a good fit for me? I don't want clients that call or they um, just asks for how is the ads going? How is this going? Um, each day, several times a day. And also if they aren't doing quality work themselves, like dentists, if they aren't treating their patients right, uh, it's not gonna be a good fit. And that's something that I really want to spend some extra time on because like the first client I got, I, I felt that it was a great fit and we are five years now into the relation and it's worked really great. They are really happy, I'm happy. And that's the type of clients that I want. So all the 262 people, they have qualified or they are qualified for my services. And I'm gonna show you next how I pre-qualify them, but also not all of them are gonna be a great fit. So that's the thing we want to find out now. So let's say, oh, we get a 10% open rate on the emails and or a 10% response rate. We have 37 people inside of uh, that are gonna get a strategy video and 40% of them are gonna say yes and we're gonna have a strategy call and that's where you close them. And let's say we have 83% closing rate and I actually have today on the script that I'm using and the techniques that I'm using on this call based on having this video first and then a strategy call, I actually have higher percentage. I have around 95% closing rate on doing that. And that means that with 83%, it's 14 people and we're gonna get 11 new clients. So that means that we're gonna have a reven revenue increase of 97 and that's profit. So a revenue increase 107,000 kroners, which is, let's see how much. So that's $11,500 and it's roughly around $10,000 in profit. So our goal for this 30 day challenge is to get 11 new clients uh, and then they need to have around a thousand dollar contract each. Then we're gonna double my income. We are gonna be using email first. So today day one is email outreach. We, day one, we're gonna outreach to dentists. Day two, electricians. Day three, lawyers. So the reason for doing that is that I don't want to either get my email uh, marked for as spam by, by Gmail, which because I'm using G Suite. And also if there are people starting to respond and contact, I want to have the time to really uh, respond and not seem stressed. And also I have to take care of my daily um, company business. So I'm gonna be using something called snow.io. I've been using it for uh, a couple of years now. And it's a great platform for uh, creating specific uh, or I should say personal email outreach at scale. And if you want, I have the affiliate link down below. If no, you don't want to use my affiliate link, if you're considering a platform like this, you can go, just go to snow.io. So I did say I, I got 262 companies. I have gone through a little bit more here and fine-tuned some of the lists. It's 255 now. And all of these prospects I've gotten just uh, hired a freelancer, said what specific um, criteria am I after in a prospect? And they filled out an Excel uh, Google sheet for me and I can just copy paste. 
I do some more vetting of the prospects so I don't outreach to people that I see I'm gonna have a problem with um, delivering SEO work or I can see that they have like a lot of one star reviews on Google. So I have taken a couple of hours to pre-vet my prospects so I don't outreach to people I don't even want to work with. So I can show you how now, how I do the, how I find the actual businesses. So let's say for instance that I want to find a dentist in a city here. So here it's gonna be in Norwegian, but I'm gonna explain it fast in English. So this is the word for dentist, and this is a city in Norway, which I don't have a, cli a client today. So I would like a client here today. So we're gonna be outreaching to some of them. Here I'm not doing uh, anything with the ads straight away, but I'm jumping straight down to the organic reach. And I'm saying that I don't want to contact any of the businesses in top three and we want to start contacting this this dentist office this one this one this is a directory 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 and here is a dentist so i've asked the freelancer to list up every uh, uh, dentist office that is not in the top three organic and list out their uh, the business owner's first name actually i'm going to show you so here you can see the freelancer has provided me with the first name of the CEO, the last name, the name of the business, the email. Now the problem mostly with dentist office is that it can be a little bit tricky finding the CEO's uh, email. So you're actually sending to a secretary or the reception and like in this city it's only uh, a generic email so we're gonna have a lot of problem reaching out to the CEO themselves so my strategy is that I'm not gonna be spending a lot of time up front finding the email for the uh, CEO because if I have some luck that it's gonna reach them it's gonna do that and if not then I'm gonna spend some time on finding the CEO's email so maybe we can get the message directly in front of him and get a response out of him because I have experienced a lot that the receptionist has been um, like the, the gatekeeper it, it, she has she or he has been told to not let any like people like me get in contact with the CEO but when you talk to the CEO they're like man I really need this So here you can see the actual sequence that we are going to be using when we're outreaching to the different type of companies. So first off, in snow.io you just select either, I've been using it a little bit more granular that, than maybe it's intended because I want to have real structure on the different type of cities, so I create a campaign for each city. Um, but in reality I could just say that all the dentists and send them out to everybody at the same time but i want to keep it more at a city level that's also so that if i can i have a structure for also if i want to start cold calling or I, I feel like i have a little bit more control it takes a little bit more time but more control to me is better so here today the first email we're going to be sending out is this one it's in norwegian here so i'm just going to be translating quite quick the first thing is that the subject is a real, like a little bit more generic and formal. It's like to the first name with um, the company name. Let's see if we can maybe tr just translate it here. So to first name at company name. And it's high first name. Uh, and I kind of like introduce myself a little bit uh, that I work with dental clinics. And that's just to quickly if they just see that first sentence on mobile they can see that it's really a specific email for them uh, at least enough to get them to open it and really start reading and i'm here i've had some custom parameters so when i import the prospects from the google sheet into snow.io i say on the prospect themselves that they are in this city it's this name and they have this and this opportunity so you, as you can see here this is uh, custom parameters so this is a template that I've created and it's gonna create some really high personalization 
uh, when they uh, when they get the email. So hi first name, it's gonna be hi John for instance, if that's the first name of the CEO. And if the company name is Dental Clinic 123, it's gonna be, and I see, I work with dental clinics around uh, Norway and see that Dental Clinic 123 can increase with over, and this per custom parameters can be like 90 new patients every month through better digital visibility than you have today. So straight out of the gate, we have shown them or told them that they have a problem or they aren't living up to their full potential. So that's like the hook to get them to start reading the rest of the email. And then we just start showing them our experience that this is based on uh, previous experience that we work with other dentists just to become an authority to them and that they should listen or at least be interested in, in what we have to offer. I'm not going to go through the entire email. You can just post a video here if you want to read it. Uh, it's not perfectly translated, so but you get like the ID of what we are doing here. And then we have some rules here if the uh, contact has opened it. Or if not, we're going to wait a day because like today, day one, it's Monday. And the CEO can be very busy today. Uh, maybe they have better time tomorrow. We're going to wait a day and then even wait a little bit longer. So if, for instance, I'm taking into account that maybe the receptionist is opening the email now and they're going to remind the CEO to read it later today. So we're going to give them some time in these delays here. And also if they haven't uh, opened the email, we're going to give them a couple of days because, uh, before we start to send out another email, a follow-up or a different type of email like this one. And this email is more based on, uh, it's still personal, we're, we're um, using their company name, their city, stuff like that. And we're following up saying that uh, if you want to be the leading dental clinic in your city. So basically this entire process is just to get in contact with the prospects, tell them the opportunity and find out if they would like to talk to us. And because we don't want to sell them, we want to find out, are they interested? Are they a great fit for our services? So it, it boils down to either we get some indications that they are interested in and we can do a manual follow-up uh, if they aren't, we can do some retargeting and if nothing works, maybe we have the wrong email, we start looking for the CEO specific email or if um, nothing works, we are going to cold call them. Or I shouldn't say not doing so good, actually they have an open rate of on average 34% and that's that's really good. We've gotten two responsi responses, um, as you can see here, one replied in this city and one replied in this city, basically telling they're not interested. But the open rates um, is what's exciting here. It just means that since so few uh, have replied, we're gonna see it's still day one. And I know from these cities, I tried some of them before, not all of them, but I know that we're hitting the gatekeepers and that's why I'm, I'm a little bit more excited about tomorrow and because the electricians we're gonna hit up tomorrow, we have the more um, direct email address to the CEO. So what we're gonna do about all of this? Well, tomorrow I'm creating a, a LinkedIn ad because LinkedIn is really great for targeting. If I want to target a dentist, I can just type in a dentist. Facebook removed that years ago, so we don't have that luxury on Facebook, but we are gonna do the same thing on Facebook. So it's now day two and Yesterday we stated that we need 11 new clients to get uh, to my double income goal. And yesterday we outreached to some dentists and we got two responses and it hasn't changed overnight. So it, we're still at zero new clients. But today we're gonna outreach to 15 cities, 84 electricians. And I'm gonna do that to snow.io, my email automation process. And I've spent now about one and a half hour just going over the prospects, fine tuning, checking that everything is okay. And now I'm gonna press the button and we'll see what type of results we're getting. 
Also, after I've set up that, I have been thinking a little bit about what type of Facebook and LinkedIn ads I want to create. And I think I want to try and mimic what I'm doing here in the emails to the businesses. Just try and, and make it uh, authentic and real ad. So I'm going to do a video ad and we'll see how that works out. And I'll inform you and show you the ad itself. And let's do it. To sum up day two, we have emailed 84 new electricians in 15 different cities. We have a very good open rate at around 37% and taking into consideration uh, yesterday's 34% uh, for the dentists, it's a good open rate, but we are not getting any response. I've gotten two answers yesterday uh, from the dentists and zero today. So I'm not discouraged, but it means that either people, it's the, I'm not blaming the Corona situation, or that people are thinking about that it's summer vacation coming up. But I think that we have to position ourselves a little bit differently. Uh, it could be that it's early in the week, so the CEOs are quite busy. From my experience, the best ways to get a response is around Wednesday and Thursday. So the follow-up sequence is gonna run for the businesses that we contacted yesterday and also today and tomorrow we are contacting lawyers. So it's now day three and it's a little bit over nine. I've done the most critical uh, agency type of stuff, some um, work that has to be done every morning. And now I'm gonna start uh, just cleaning up the prospects for the lawyer outreaching through email. And then I'm gonna go over and create a LinkedIn video ad for the electricians that we're gonna target. And I'm gonna show a little bit more of that today. And also if I get the time, I'm gonna create uh, a LinkedIn ad, a video ad for the lawyers as well. So it's day four and yesterday was kind of crazy. I didn't take the time to film in the evening because it was just a little bit crazy. And that shows when you're trying to grow at a rapid rate, you start to get some problems. And as soon as you also finish a problem, you replace that problem with a bigger problem. So for instance, uh, yesterday I outreached to all the lawyers in Norway that I want to work with. And of course, something happened first off with snow.io that my email account was not connecting correctly. It wasn't sending out and then just getting an error. Uh, so that took some time and also when I started noticing when the emails were going out to the lawyers there was a little space within a bracket so that uh, the para parameters wasn't working correctly so it just uh, it was a wording that was wrong so but you just take that and use it as an advantage first off I think immediately it looks unprofessional uh, if your email doesn't make sense, or in this case, it was like, I wish that this email comes uh, comes forward to, and the business owner's name is gonna be inserted at the end there, but it didn't insert the name, so it just said, I wish that this email comes to blank. So that seems very like a spam email, So, but just don't worry about it. Just think about, okay, how can I turn this into something positive? And I had a good, uh, a very good open rate, around 40%. No responses, like every other campaign. So late last evening, or not too late, I think it was around nine, I started just duplicating the campaigns, changing the header to, I'm sorry about the writing error in the last email, and just a short summary that I'm sorry that it seemed inappropriate, or not inappropriate, but it seemed maybe like spam. I forgot to enter your name. And here is, and I also forgot the reference link. So here is my reference link again. So I just turned that and I started to get responses. Like there aren't the positive responses like, hey, I would like to work with you. It was the responses that, hey, we don't need your services. But that's good because someone said that uh, they thought that the first email was spam. And I can see that in, in retrospect that it, it may seem so, especially when you forget the name. So that's corrected and all the emails now are going on automation, so the follow-up sequences, um, but it doesn't seem to be working like they used to. It may be something about the corona situation, it's starting to 
come back again a little bit in Norway, so it's a bit uncertain. But also I think that uh, people are generally, the, the businesses that I have been contacting are my perfect clients. So many of them are already very happy about their uh, current flow of customers. So I think that may, we're gonna end up with a lot of cold calling, but I don't mind. So we're gonna start refreshing today about some of the cold calling scripts. Just see if I have to rewrite or do something new. Uh, maybe I'll address the current situation heads on. And also yesterday, just before going to bed, it was around 11, half 12 and uh, a longer work day. And then I got mail from Facebook that my personal ad account or my company's ad account was deactivated. And that was of course, when all the campaigns was done, I'd be, been excited to just start spending a little more budget on them, getting them out. It was for the dentist, the electrician. It was only the lawyers that was missing from the Facebook ads, but at least they have started to run. And then I get a deactivated ad account. And the reason was that there was an ad four years ago that I run on that, uh, uh, had run on that ad account that had the word Facebook in the headline of the ad. And the ad campaign itself had 16 different ads. It's just some different variables within those 16. But Facebook decided to run a, a, re, a review on all my ads in that ad account. And they found that four year old ad. They disapproved one ad, but it wasn't just one ad, it was 16. So when the, you get that kind of volume of this um, disapproval at one time, your ad account will de get deactivated. So I've contacted Facebook that they can, it's just something that I can't do something about, but they, they can see quite easily that this uh, ad hasn't been run for four years. There shouldn't be a problem to just either delete it or open the accounts and I can delete it. But I don't want to wait for that because they have stated on their website that they have several weeks um, approval time or just to get in contact with some people at Facebook to get that in order. So I've moved forward to just downloading all the or exporting all the ads that I created and I made a new ad account in my B Facebook business manager. And I'm now going to import all the Facebook ads, get that up and running again, and then start focusing on the cold calling script. So as you can see here, the my uh, account has been disabled and all the way down here, there was an ad from long, long, time ago that was disapproved. And I can't blame their system. I know that it's, if you start to get a lot of ads disapproved, you are at risk of getting your account disabled. Now there is one more, even worse thing that can happen. And that is if you have several ad accounts getting deactivated or disabled, or you make a very, very bad ad that is so against uh, the restricted guidelines, your personal account will no longer be able to go within Fis Facebook Business Manager. And that means that you can't pr even promote from yourself. And that's a problem if you have a personal brand, so be aware of that, that it can happen.